Shabbat Shalom to everybody, and welcome again to First Yehudim Messianic Temple here in Lake Placid, Florida. I am his servant, Maria Simpson, and today we, we have a wonderful teaching today, and it's about the name of Yahweh, what does it represent, what does it mean, and it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting, very powerful message. So before we start, um, we're going to have Sister Olga come up and read the Psalms for today, which is Psalms uh, 24. Psalm 24. The earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of Yahweh? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from Yahweh and righteousness from the Elohim of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Amen. Who is the King of glory? The Yahweh strong and mighty, the Yahweh mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the kingdom of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Yahweh of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Psalm 24. That was Psalm 24. Thank you, uh, Sister Olga, for for reading today's uh, for reading today's uh, psalms. It is because uh, every every day is a new psalm. Now, why did I bring this message? And really, the message is titled title, Yahweh Who. Because God, really, God, who is God? When we say God, God is a title. Lord is a title. It's not a name, it's a title. <coughs> and see, the Most High likes to be called by His name, just like you and I. We love to be called by our name. And the funny thing is that may, you know that when, when we receive a letter, any type of mail, and it has our name, but it's, it's really spelled wrong, we don't like it. We call the company, whoever sent it, and says, you know what, uh, you, said my, you, spell my, you misspelled my name. Because everybody likes to be called by their name and their right name. Now, I want you to go with me to Exodus because many say that it really doesn't matter the name you use. Do you feel the same way about your name? <laughs> that it doesn't matter what name they, they give you? Or do you want people to call you by your name? So see, whoever is saying that it doesn't matter what name you call God... He will answer you. Well, if somebody were to call you a different name, would you answer them? No. Maybe at first, because maybe they're just kidding around. But after a while, when they take it serious, would you answer them? No. Because you and I take our names very serious. And it's a name that was given to us at birth. Doesn't matter. So let's see what the name Yahweh represents what does it mean why is it so important why do we have to say it? what what's the meaning of it and all those that are really interested say amen 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 so we're going to exodus today 20. we're going to exodus chapter 20 today we're going to he's got today uh he's going to give us enlightenment in other words he's going to give us the light the green light of really what his name means Amen. Exodus chapter 20, and this is, 
This is really um, talking about the third commandment. See, this is the third commandment, and it says on verse number seven, Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Mm -hmm. Now, why did he say this? Because, see, when Yahweh took Israel out of Egypt, they did not know who he was. Israel was used to worshiping Pharaoh raw like a god. They were used to worshiping animals like a god. They were used to they used to serve gods that they will see. So they were used to for 400 years they were used to see they were used to worship idols and and people and animals. The golden calf. The golden calf. Thank you. They were not used to really worshiping a God that you don't see. That they didn't see. And see. We too have done that. Because we have worshipped false gods. False doctrines. And really, when I mean gods, it's not just a, a ceramic idol, which that could be with, made of gold, made of silver. A god can be anything. For example, I come, I, 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 I was, I, I come, I'm, I'm, I come from the, I come from the culture of Cubans. My parents are Cubans. I was raised Cuban. I came to the United States when I was nine years old. My mom and dad were raised Catholics. And in Cuba, you worship what they call here in America, here they call the Virgin Mary, they used to call La Caridad de Cobre. They used to call them, in other words, uh, the Charity of Mercy. That was her name, instead of the Virgin Mary, but it's the same thing. In Mexico, they call her the Guadalupana. It's the same thing. My mom and dad used to have a shrine in the, in the house of Saint, uh, they, they used to call him Lazarus. Can you imagine worshiping Saint Lazarus? A man with, 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 two, with, with, with problems in his legs and two dogs licking his sores. So I came from that. Abraham was an idol worshiper. He mm -hmm. didn't know the Yahweh, Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. He was Cuban. See, in order for you to understand who Yahweh really is, He's got to take you out of Babylon. Amen. He got to take you out of Bab He's got to take you out of paganism because every god has a name. Every false god has a name. But the real true Elohim of heaven and earth is the great I am, Yahweh Sabaoth. And we, we will go see what that means. Don't you agree with me that we serve an awesome creator? Amen. Now, who is Yahweh? What does Yahweh represent? Who is Yeshua and what does Yeshua represent? Why do I have to call their names? And why, why, what, what, what's the purpose of it? The reason we have to call by their names is because that is their name. Everything that Yahweh created has a name. Trees, every tree has a name. Flowers have names. In your house, if you look around your house, everything in your house has names. You got a table, you got chairs, you, you, you have a bathroom, you have a kitchen, you got pots and pans. Everything has names because names represents character, the character of that person or the thing. Our dogs and cats have names. Thank you. The dogs, you give your dog and your cats, your animals, you give them names. 
And when you give them name, it represents something that says, why should I name my dog? Poofy or, or here Fido or you just remember, you, you just think of something and you, you place a name upon them. When Yahweh brought all the animals to it, to Adam, he brought them so he can learn how to name things. Did you know that the great miracles were worked in the Old Testament through the personal name of the Most High? Did you know this? See, your power that you have is the power when you use His name. The personal name of the Creator had been obscured. In other words, it was, it was sort of like, um, it was hidden, okay, through superstition, even as it is today. And many say, it doesn't matter what name you use because all the names of the gods, it goes straight to Yahweh. Well, that's not true. Because let me tell you this, for those that are married or for those that are dating, when you are intimacy, and I'm talking about marriage now, when you are intimate with your husband or your wife, do you call your wife in intimacy with another girl, woman's name, or do you use her name? And let me take it a little farther. When you are in intimacy as husband and wife, the wife, wife, do you call, let's suppose your husband's name is Peter. Would you call him Samson? Where are you, Samson? What would happen if you, in intimacy, the wife calls her husband by another name that is not his? He stops everything as, ¿Qué pasa contigo? What's going on with you? What do you mean, Samson? When, when do you see Samson? I weigh 150 pounds. What are you talking about? Who is the Samson you're talking about? Does, does he or that? Will he or will he not say this? So names are very important. Now, everybody likes to be called by their names. Do you agree with me? Yes. Names mean something. Your name means something. It is so profound that most men, when they, when they buy a boat, they put a name on the boat. And most of the time, most of the time, it is female name. Just like a car. You will never call a car he. You will always call a car she. Never call it he. You call it she. No. Names mean something. Everything around you has a name because it means something. When someone calls your name, it is the sweetest sound you hear in your ear. You love when people call your name. They recognize who you are, especially when you are a professional. You're a doctor. You love to be called Dr. Luchin. Dr. Simpson. Because we love to be called by our names. Because when someone says your name, the first thing you, you think about, I got recognized. Somebody knows me. Out of the whole hundred people in the room, somebody said, somebody said, Dr. Luchin. And how does that make you feel? Or how would that make you feel? Great! Because we want recognition. Well, the same thing is goes for Yahweh. Amen. The same thing goes for Yahweh. Amen. For example, I'm going to give you my name. I'm going to give you my full version of my name. My name is, is from birth, it, was called, it is called Maria Elena Perez Simpson. Now, let me say it in English. So let, let me say it in English. Maria Elena Perez Simpson. Maria means bitter. Elena means the goddess Helen. Perez comes from...
from the tribe of Judah, which means breach or breakthrough. And Simpson, which I marry into a Simpson, my husband's last name is Simpson, comes from the tribe of Simeon, which means hear and listen. The name Yahweh, wow. it is the promise of Elohim's name. In the, in, the, in, in, in the Jewish tradition, it is too holy to pronounce. And actually, it's not, it's not it really, you know, you add an A and an E, but there's no, there's no vowels in Hebrew. It's just four letters, yo heg va he okay? Which means Yahweh without vowels. Yahweh is referred to, and it's called uh, tetragamton, tetragamton. Which simply means the four letters. It comes from the Hebrew letters Yod He Vahe. What is Elohim's or what is God's name and what does it mean? And why do I have to know this? Well, because there's a difference between God and Yahweh. There's a difference between God. And Elohim. God can be anybody. Because there's different types of gods. God is a title. God is not a name. He loves everything, loves to be called by their name, even your dog. Your dog runs when you call here, Fido. They won't come if you call them. That's right. The name Yo. Have a That's true. I like that. It refers to the existence yeah, of, of Yahweh. Because he describes himself not as Yahweh. He describes himself as I am. So Yahweh is I am. And if I am is with you, who can be against you? When you are going through something really bad in your life that you don't know how to get out of it, begin to say, I am great. I, I am, I am who I am because I am come, I am come from I am. I am positive. I am beautiful. I am handsome. I am, I am intelligent. Because when you begin to use the words, two words, I am, you are going to overcome that obstacle that is in your life right now. Because really, Yahweh and I am, this, he says I am, meaning I have always existed. I don't have any teachers. I don't get wisdom from anybody. I have always been yesterday, today, and forevermore. And nobody can tell me because I am who I am. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Now, this is, this is when, when, <laughs> this is when Moses is seeing a burning bush that is something Really, a burning bush, the reason that the bush was burning because it was an angel of fire, sort of speaking, and it was. And the bush did not burn. And this, this, this draw curiosity to Moses. See, Yahweh's for everybody, but not everybody's ready for Yahweh. Because that burning bush, every nation saw, but the only one that really got close to it was Moses. Because he began to be curious. Because when you are curious in his, when you are curious in the word, you begin to seek. You begin to seek the kingdom and you will find it. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. And look at what happened now, 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 now. this burning bush. It's an angel, really, it really, this burning bush is Yeshua. It's called Metatron. It's the right hand of Yahweh. Because no man can see Yahweh. No man, no man can see Yahweh. 
And literally, and this is a teaching that I believe that Yeshua, before he became, before he was, he was born from the virgin, Yeshua was an angel. He's always been an angel. And he begins talking to, to Moses and says, you're going to go into Egypt and you're going to, you're going to go and talk to Pharaoh and tell him that the, the God of Israel has sent you so you can deliver all Israel out of Egypt. <laughs> now Moses is saying, and who, and what is your name? What is your name? That I, want me, <laughs> I'm used to worshiping idols and, 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 and idols that I see, but who are you? I mean, what is, what is your name? And verse, chapter 3, verse 13. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I came out of the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of my fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Verse 14. And Elohim said unto Moses, which really, really the, the one that said this was the angel of, of, of Yahweh. And how can I say this? And I'll tell you in a little bit. And Elohim said to Moses, and look at it, in my Bible, the King James is huge. It's huge, in big letters. I am that I am, and he said, Thou shall you say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And Elohim said unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, your Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Jesus, and the Elohim of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Amen. How can I say that that was an angel? Right there on that chapter, look at verse number, on verse number one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jer uh, uh, Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock of backside of the de on the, in the desert and came unto the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fires out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So it was not Yahweh, it was an angel of Yahweh called Metatron. This is where they have the movies now. Watch this. Elohim said to Moses, I am that I am, has sent me to you. The angel is saying, I am that I am, has sent me to you. Wow. Yahweh has sent me to you. And in Hebrew it's called... It's, <laughs> now, the word I am in Hebrew, which is also read, I will be whatever you want me to be. Yahweh means I am, and I am means I will be whatever you want me to be. When he says, I am, because we need to understand that Yahweh has no beginning. He has no end. He is omnipresent, omniscient. He is all over. He is very powerful. I am, in, in, which means, is, it means that I will be. When he says, I will be, you can put whatever you want. He is your healer. He is your, rede he is your redeemer. He is your savior. He is your stone tower. He is your olive and your tall. Oh. <laughs> he is your great banner, means your victory. Amen. He is the father in heaven. He is the great counselor. He is the, he is the good shepherd. Now, do you understand what it means? I am means I will be. What does that mean? I will be. So what, and what that means is what is impossible for Yahweh? Nothing. I am. Nothing. So if nothing is impossible for Yahweh, because he's always existed, no, he's always been, 
and he is inside of you, I am is inside of you, then what is impossible for you? Jehovah and Yahweh are two different things. Jehovah is not Yahweh. Because in Hebrew, there's no J's. The name Jehovah is never used or seen in the New Testament. Elohim actually has many names, and they are often tied to attributes. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Rapha, he's my healer. Yahweh Nisi, he's my victory, my banner. Yahweh my righteousness, which means he's my redeemer. And so on and so on. Yahweh El Shaddai. He is the Almighty One. So when He says I am, it means that I, it means, really means I will be. Do you need Him? Begin calling Yahweh Rapha. Yahweh Rapha is my healer. I am healed from, my, from, the, from the tips of my hair all the way to my, my toes. I am healed because Yeshua was crucified on the cross. And by his stripes, I am, I was, look at this, I was healed. Who is next to you right now? And when I mean who's next to you, because he, Yahweh, has promised you something. That only was between you and him. And most people don't, don't understand. And most people are not with you. Because that promise was not for them. It was for you. <laughs> so why are you so worried. About who is next to you. And why is so and so have left you. Let me tell you what happened in worship today. We get very discouraged when we don't see other people supporting us. And I mean us, I mean you too. We get very discouraged when, when, when friends and family members don't participate in our dreams. My husband and I get very discouraged when we have when we have brought so much of his word. I mean, I'm talking about heavy duty stuff. And what they have done, many, and I'm gonna say it my, my, the, the Cuban way. They have gone to the bathroom and cleaned their behind with it. And it's very discouraging. It's very discouraging when you are walking in this truth. And you are not seeing the people that started with you. Do you all agree with me? Yes. But I'm going to tell you my testimony of what I saw this morning. It worked. Your dream, your goal, your potential is nobody else's, is yours. So you cannot, you cannot think that Susie Q and, 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 and Gilligan's Island and so on and so on are going to be running your race with you because that race is only yours. And everybody that starts a race, not everybody wins. There can be a hundred people and at the end of the, and the finish line, I can tell you maybe you'll get three or four people that will finish. Some people drop out. And some people drop out. I like that. But let me tell you what I saw. And this is also for my husband because he doesn't know. It's for some of you. As we're worshiping today, I close my eyes and I, I mean, I feel like I'm in the, I, I feel like I'm in the, uh, the Holy of Holies. And as I look outside, because we live in acreage, we live in acres. I look outside and the day is gorgeous. And I'm going to tell you what I saw in a vision. I saw Abraham. I saw Moses. And I saw a, a whole host of people that have died in the, from the Bible. But the one that spoke to me the most was Abraham and says, 
Don't quit. Keep on going. Because I too were where you're at. Don't lose your faith. Keep your eyes on him and worship every time you can. Because I too did not know his name when, when I came out of, out of Babylon. And then he goes to me, look around you. Look at how many people have died from the Bible that we all had the kind of faith that you have. And when we came out of our family, out of our, out of, out of our towns, when we came out of Babylon, very few people left with us. And this is, I'm telling you, this is the vision I had. And he said to me, because now you have entered into a dimension that they are not. Now you have entered into a dimension that is very powerful. That, that, it, that, it, that, that the most high only gives to a certain amount of people. Now, why did he give me this? Why did I saw this vision? Why did I see this vision? Because I too am discouraged. At times because I'm human. Last time, our, our air conditioner was sleeping. My husband wakes me up at 11.30 at night. Honey, we have no air conditioner. The water pump broke. The enemy is angry because of what we bring. I had to, uh, one, of my, one of the sisters, uh, uh, thank you, Sadie. I had to text her and says, can you please let's pray because my husband's outside. Almost at 12 midnight, trying to see if he can fix the air conditioner. Because the enemy is angry because of this message. She started praying and I started praying. And in less than five minutes, the air conditioner started working. That is the dimension that he is taking us to. It's called a dimension of prayer. And when you begin to understand and know who Yahweh is, nothing will be impossible for you because there's power in his name. There's power in the name of Yahweh. There's power in the name of Yeshua. There's power in the Ruach HaKadosh. Because you and I cannot overcome spiritual things physically. We cannot do that. We have to overcome spiritual things spiritually and we cannot do it ourselves so we need help we need help we need all the army of heaven to be on our side but you have to believe it's a faith it's a dimension that he takes you and is very powerful and nothing will be impossible for you when a woman is in labor and i say i know i say this a lot when a woman is in labor pains of course, you, you men will not understand that. But those mothers that have been gone through labor pains know what it is like. And you're in, and I'm talking about labor pain. I'm not talking about they're going to give you that injection so you don't go through no pain. No, no. Labor pain. Na, a la natural. Natural. You know what natural means? Natural. And you see the doctors talk. And you, and you are suffering there. You are suffering. You said, I don't want to feel this. this I want to die. Your teeth begin to get loose. Because <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Mentally, because we need to psych it ourselves. This will pay. And I know that baby's coming because I love that. Father, help me. Give me strength. This is what mother, women do when they're in pain, labor pain. Well, you're going through a labor pain. And who is next to you? Because the labor pain that you're going through, others are not going through. That's why they don't understand you. And that's why, they, that's why they are not with you. And let me tell you, it's coming. Your blessing is coming. And that house, whatever it is, that house is coming. And you are about to give birth to a house. Imagine a, birth, a house coming out of you. Do you think that's going to be, that's going to be, that's going to be easy? See, the bigger the blessing, the more you're going to be hurting. Because Yahweh has given you that promise. His name is powerful. And his name, listen, listen very carefully. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Stop looking 
at your right side, your left side. Who is this? And why did he stop? Why did he laugh? Why did she stay? Why did stop doing that? He's trying to teach you something. You have the name of Yahweh that has been inscribed in your mind. It's right here in your in your forehead. The name of Yahweh. He's got different names. Yahweh Rafa, uh, El Shaddai, El El Young. What that means is his characters, his attributes. When we say Elohim who sees me means El Rohi, Elohim Almighty, El Shaddai, Elohim Everlasting, El Olam, and so on and so All these names are inside of you. This is why when you say his name, it is the power of him because you are giving him recognition. And when you people recognize your name, you feel great. When you see your name that everybody's graduating and you look to see if your name is there. You look, I want to see if my name is there. Why is that? Because you, you want to see if they recognize you. And when you see your name on that on that list of graduates, and you see your name, wow, my name is there. When you see your name in a trophy, when you see your name in a certificate, when you see your name in a license, recognition, what happens to you? You feel great, you feel good. And guess what happens? People begin to serve you. People begin, I'm not kidding, people begin to give you things. Be give you money, give you time, give you the word. They begin to give you things because names represent something. My father was on a landscaping service in Chicago. Most of my father's clients were all Jews. My father will go to a nursery, a nursery and my father will say, let me have $15,000 and I'll pay you in a week. My father did it. I will go to the nursery and I said, I'm, I, I came in my papa's name, Jose Ramon Perez. Jose Ramon Perez. You can take even $30,000 from here because that's your father. Your father is, his name is something else. When you say the name of people that really are not that nice, what do you think when you think of that name? Run. Hitler, Fidel Castro, Mussolini. Number one, he never had a beginning. Number two, Elohim will never end. If he did not come into being, he did not go out of being because he is a being. In other words, he never has a beginning and he never has an end. Three. Yahweh is absolutely reality. There's nothing false about him. There is no reality. There's, there's no reality before him. He is the reality. There is no reality outside of him unless he wills it. And makes it so. He is all that was eternally. No space. No universe. No emptiness. Only Yahweh. Yahweh. Is eternity. Four. Yahweh is utterly independent. His name is. The entire universe is utterly secondary. And he is. He is the main man. He is number one, numero uno. Number six. All the universe is by comparison to Elohim is nothing. Every beauty, every wonders that you see that is awesome and is crazy. Wow. In the universe is nothing compared to Yahweh. All that we are amazed by the world and the galaxy is compared to Elohim is nothing. And this power is inside of you. 
His name, he wrote his name on your forehead. Seven. Yahweh is constant. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Not like us. Every time we move in the bed in the, at nighttime, we, we think something different because depending on what side of the brain we're at. Either the left, the right, or maybe in the middle. Okay? He cannot be improved. He is not becoming anything. He is who he is. He doesn't have calendars. <laughs> There is no guilt in him to determine what is excellent and what is beauty. He is the standard of what is right, what is true, and what is beautiful. Nine. Yahweh does whatever he pleases. And you cannot tell him not to. And he always does it according to the truth. Because he is the truth. And there's no lies in him. Amen. All reality. Look at this. All reality is outside of him. Because he created everything. Ten. And last one. Yahweh Elohim is the most important, most valuable reality and person in the universe. He is more worthy... Of interest and attention and admiration and enjoyment than all other reality. Of their name, yes or no? People love to hear their names in newspapers, in plaques, in trophies, in libraries, in museums. This proves that people love recognition. They love to be remembered. So does Yahweh. By remembering someone's name, you make a great impression and are paying them a huge compliment. You show them that they are important to you, that they matter. Does Yahweh matter to you? Does Elohim matter to you? Or do people matter to you most? Because the Bible says that Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And it also says, curse is a man that trusts in other men, and blessed is, blessed is a man that trusts in Yahweh. So who, who do you trust more? No. Mankind? Or the creator of heaven and earth? I don't want you to tell me. Show me. Have you ever, somebody said their name and automatically you forgot? Yes. Why is that? What, what, why is that? Why is that our, our, our veins and the heart, everything has a name because the name represents their character, what they are, their attributes. Yeshua, the right hand of the Father, the Son of the living Elohim, is sitting, interceding for us. And when Yeshua was being baptized by John the Baptist, the heaven opened and it says, And the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, why do we go to Yeshua now? What's the difference between Yeshua and Jesus? It's much. Number one, in Hebrew, there's no J's. Well, I speak in English, and I, I say Jesus. Really? Haven't you noticed that in, in, in the Spanish countries, a lot of boys are named Jesus? Come on, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. Isn't that embarrassing? Well, this is where I live. Really? Well, let me tell you. Um, let's go to Isaiah 7.14. Because there's power in the name. It says here, in Isaiah 7.14, this is when the, the prophet Isaiah... Immanuel. If you if you turn this instead of reading it from left to right, you read it from right to left. You see that it says El Manuel, which means Elohim with us. Elohim with us. Me means El Shaddai, the All Powerful One is with us. 
This is the name. Go with me, please, to the book of... This is this is uh, Matthew 123. This is when the angel spoke to Mary that she was going to conceive and bear a son. Okay? And look at what it says in Matthew 123. Matthew 123. Behold, a virgin shall be with a child. Now, this is... I'm sorry. It's not the virgin. This is when the angel spoke to Joseph... In, the, in, the, in, his, in his dream. Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted means Elohim with us. Then Joseph being raised from his sleep did, did as the angel, um, uh, did the angel had written, bidden him and took him his wife, in other words, Mary, and knew her not till she brought forth her first son and called his name Jesus. Jesus and, and Emmanuel are two different things. Now, the Bible has been manipulated backwards, forwards, and all kinds. And the ones that have taken a lot of things out of the Bible is really wrong. Because most of the emperors... Names always ended in U.S. Us, Julius, um, Emperor Constantinus, Flavius. He's he's got three names and they're all ended in U.S. <laughs> Why U.S.? Why U.S.? U.S. means U.S. <laughs> US because it's talking about Zeus or Zeus. Talking about Zeus, Rome mingled and started going and believing in what is called Greek philosophy. Analyze, analyze. So a lot of the things that have been taken has been manipulated by Rome to be removed from the Bible. And today now, through the Ruach HaKadosh, he reveals to us what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter what name you use. Well, do you say the same thing about your name? Do you go around saying, it doesn't matter what you call me. You can call me whatever you want. Because most people don't say that. So why should we say, why should we say that about, about his holy name? He says, don't use my name in vain. One of, the, one of the commandments, what does that mean? It means, why should you take my name, this is Yahweh, and put somebody else's name? That's using his name in vain. I'm not against anybody. I'm just, I'm bringing the word. And if you want to get angry with me, you get angry with me, not with the most high. Because you don't like what I'm saying? Well, that's too bad. Because it's the truth, and the truth hurts. And nobody likes it. They want it, but nobody likes it. Listen very carefully. Emmanuel is the Messiah foretold in the other prophecies of Isaiah. But also, Emmanuel was a Palestine city. Was a Palestine city. You want to see it? Emmanuel was a Palestine city too. Isaiah chapter 8, let's go there, Isaiah chapter 8, verse number 8. So Emmanuel was also a Palestinian uh, uh, town. Isaiah chapter 8, verse number 8. And look at what it says. 8-8. Eight, eight. And he shall pass through the Judah, and he shall overthrow and go over, and he shall t reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. Palestine is called the land of Emmanuel. Though in other passages it's in, it's in terms of the land of inheritance of Yahweh. It's also the inheritance of Yahweh. You can find this in Hosea chapter 3 verse, I'm sorry, Hosea 9.3, Jeremiah 2.7, Jeremiah 12.14, and etc. So Emmanuel and Yahweh are identified. 
His name shall be called Emmanuel, the Messiah, anointed one from above. The question is, the Messiah was called Emmanuel or Elohim with us, admits of a double answer. The name is pledged out of divine help and also a description of the nature of the Messiah. Emmanuel or Elohim with us is the divine presence among his people. Hmm. When you say when we say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? Let me hear you. What, what does that mean to you? When we say or when you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, does that make you a God? No. Does that make you that you are Yahweh? No. Does that make you that you are Yeshua? No. Because Yeshua said, if you ask the Father, we will, I will pray to the Father and he will give you what you want. And guess what? We will come and we will dwell in your body. So does that mean that we're God? Because he dwells in us. Does that mean we're God? Does that mean we're Yahweh? Does that mean that people have to worship him now because Yeshua and the Father and the Ruach HaKadosh and Sarabah? Does that mean that now? When he says that greater is he that is in us than he that, that is in the world. What does that mean? What that means is. Emmanuel. It means his divine presence is inside of us. When you are in Christianity, the one you elevate the most is, is Jesus. When you begin to be in this truth, the one you elevate is Yahweh. When you are in Christianity, the least person you talk about is the Father. You constantly talk about Jesus. Well, Jesus is God. Really? Jesus is God. I used to believe that too. Let's go to John chapter 17. See, I'm not here to tell you what you should believe, what you shouldn't believe. You believe, you know, you believe whatever you want. You believe that Jesus is, is God, then that's, that's okay. You believe, you, be, you believe whatever you want. I am just here to tell you the truth. Either you, either you, you take it in your mouth, you begin to chew it, let it go in your stomach, and let it digest, or you vomit it out. It's up to you. I am not here to. I'm not here to, to talk to you about religion. I am not here to talk about legalism. I'm telling you here to talk about the truth. Well, some of you say, well, it doesn't matter what you call him. You can call it Hare Krishna. You can call it uh, uh, divine uh, intelligence. You can call it divine presence. Papito. You can call it huh? Papito. You can call him Papito. Whatever you call them, that's up to you. I am just here to bring you the truth. What you do with this is up to you. I'm not telling you that you should be converted into something because number, number one, let me, let me explain this before I read. It's just some light. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible did Yahweh call people to be members of anything. Nowhere in the Bible did he call anywhere in the Bible people to be in some kind of doctrines. Or denominations or non-denominations. See, the reason this has happened is because we love to change the names. We love to change things. We like to make our own rules. We like, thank you. We love to make our own rules, our own laws, our how, and our own bylaws. <laughs> the truth is, is a choice, just like the lies of Satan is also a choice. Yeah. We choose whatever we want. Because on the day of judgment day, no one can stand before Yeshua and says, no, because my mama, my daddy, no, because the devil made me do it. The devil doesn't make anybody do anything. He simply puts it in front of us and he tempts us. Either we eat from his plate or from his tree or we don't. So, please, I am not here to come against anybody. I'm not, well, Maria, it doesn't matter. Now you're bringing these. You know what, please, I am not here for this. I'm not, I don't mean to, to disrespect anybody. But this is what he has shown me. 
You can take it to the band. You can take it wherever you want. It's okay. I will still love you, whether you stay or go. But look at what it says here. What did it say, Matthew what? Oh, John chapter 17. How can, I, before I read, how can Yeshua, before he was, okay, when he was being baptized by John, the heavens opened, and a voice began to say, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, you say this was this is my God, my beloved God. <laughs> he did not say, this is my beloved God in whom I am well pleased. Oh, Yeshua, when he preached, when he taught anywhere, he always spoke about his father. Amen. When the rich man came to him and said, oh, good master, what should I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. And Yeshua stopped and turned around and looked at the man and says, why do you call me good? There's nobody good but God. And now look at what now. In here in Matthew, I'm sorry, in John chapter 17, Yeshua is praying for them and for us. And look at what he says, verse number 1. These are the words that spoke Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy son, and the Son will also glorify thee. As you have given him, talking about him, power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is the life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God, Elohim, and Yeshua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. Verse 6, I have manifested your name unto the man which you gave out of the world, to me out of the world. Thy they, uh, in other words, thine they were, and you gave them to me, and they kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever have given to me, are thee. Now, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come unto thee, O Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Your name. Does yours say that? Those that you gave me I have kept, and none of them I is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Okay. Verse 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. Do people hate you because you're doing this? Do people hate you? Yes. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now look at he's having a com, he's having a com, a divine communication with you, with his Father in heaven. Verse fifteen. I pray now that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Verse seventeen. Sanctify them through thy truth. The word is truth. Verse 20, neither do I pray for these alone, but those that you will give them, that you were going to give to me. 21, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given to them that they might be one even as we are one. Amen. Twenty-four. Father, I will that you also whom thou hast given me be with me uh, where, where I am that they may behold my glory 
which you have given me, which you have given me, for thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. Look at it. You have loved me before the foundations of the world. 25. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that thou that you have sent me. I have declared unto them, to them what? Your name. I have declared unto them your name. And will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Oh, Yahweh does not give his glory to no one. No one. And for you, see, my understanding of what he has given me is that Yeshua, and that's a teaching that I have to bring you. I cannot bring it. Yeshua was an angel. Yeshua was chosen that he was going to be born into a family and be the Messiah. Because the only ones that really had true blood Pure blood was Adam before he sinned and Yeshua. Hallelujah. In the book of Ephesians, it says that he knew us before the foundations of the world. Even though that means that we were on his mind. But how is that? Have you ever had an experience in your life? It's called a deja vu. Have you ever had a deja vu? Mm -hmm. That you, you were going through some kind of experience that you felt that you, the person is saying what they're saying and, and you've been there before. And in seconds, there's things that happen in our lives that we have no understanding. Because these are little things that he gives us. And I personally don't believe in, in, in reincarnation. I don't believe in that. But I do believe that he uses us in visions and dreams and certain things that other people cannot see. It doesn't mean that we're crazy. No. Elohim the Father is named Yahweh. Jesus was never actually called Yahweh as though it was his name. But his role was that bringing the righteousness of Yahweh to those who would believe in him. Exchanging their righteousness for our sins. Second Corinthians, you don't have to go there. 521. Therefore, this is one of many titles of the names which belong to him. In the same way, to say Jesus will be called Emmanuel means that Jesus is God. Yeshua Tabernacle, and go, let's go there, John chapter 1. Yeshua Tabernacle, the power of Yahweh among us. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, talking about Genesis, or it really is talking about the beginning of everything. And there's no beginning with him because he does not have a beginning. So really beginning here is talking about Genesis. Talking about the creation. Because before the creation, Yahweh always existed. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with Elohim. And the Word was Elohim. Let me rephrase that. In the beginning was the Word, Aleph Tav. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and the last one. And the Word was Elohim or God. Aleph Tav. And the word was God, Elohim. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. See, of the Father, full of grace and truth. We understand that Yahweh can do anything. And I, 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 was, I, was, I was taught in Christianity 
that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same. The Father is a title. The Son is a title. And to understand the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is the Trinity, I have to bring you the teaching of the, of the Trinity. That that never, because Yahweh is one, Yahweh is Edhad, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ehad. He's one. Amen. He is not three. I was told that God the Father is God, God the Son is God, and God the Holy Spirit is God. That's not true. You can believe whatever you want, and that's okay. But that's not true. Amen. You need to speak the truth in season and out of season. And I know I'm, I'm stepping in a lot of toes right now. That some of you don't like it. Well, do you like the politics right now? But still going on. So you know what? Listen very carefully. Jesus' name was not Emmanuel, but Yeshua was the meaning of Emmanuel. Elohim with us. Emmanuel is one of the many titles of Yeshua, a description of who he is. Everything has a name. And names mean something. When we speak, we are making a sound. Listen very carefully. Say your name right now. Say your name. Say your name. How does it sound? What you're doing, you're not saying. You're making a sound. You're, 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 you're making the sound of music. My name is Maria. Maria. It's, uh, you're making the sound of music. When we speak, we are making, we are making music. This is why people in different countries, including in Cuba, you, you got los habaneros, which is in Havana, they spoke one way, and then you got los orientales in, in the Orient, whatever I think it's called, in the province al Oriente, and they have a different dialect. And different accents. And different accents. Accents and dialects are singing. We sing. When I, right now, I'm not speaking, I'm singing. I'm making a sound. I'm making a sound. This is why when we say Yahshua, Yahweh, Jesus, Jesus, listen very carefully. Are you ready for this? Because I'm, I'm now going to take you and you see when we say the name Yah, yeah. Yahweh, Yahshua. Well, that's in Hebrew. You're right. That's why you have to speak Hebrew. And see what it says. Look at look at this. Okay. I'll come to this in a second. When we're saying a name, that name is coming out of our mouth, whatever it is. It can be money, it can be house. It can be husband, it can be marriage, it can be... It doesn't matter. Whatever sound you are speaking out of your mouth you, is coming frequency. And when you send that frequency, uh, that name that you're calling that name, it goes and does what... It's, it's, it goes. In other words, you are attracting what you're calling. Because what you're seeking is seeking you. What you're seeking is seeking you. This is why we need to be very careful what comes out of our mouth. Out of our mouth. Here we go. Are you, are you ready? Before I, look at this. In Hebrew, there's no vowels. So really, Yahweh is only four letters. Yod, He, Vav, He. That's it. And Yeshua. Shua means saves or savior. Yah. Yah. 
This means I am that I am. And that means, okay, it means Savior Yahweh or Yahweh saves or Savior, okay? Which means I am, okay? I am. If you put I am in front of you, behind you, on top of you, beside you, when you sleep, when you can accomplish anything. That's why his name, look, li listen very carefully. Some say, some, some call it like this. Um, what did I say? Yeshua. Listen very carefully. Nobody knows how to pronounce Yahweh's name correctly. No one, not even me. Because his name is so, so sacred. It sounds like this. You know, the, the, the four letters, you'll have a hey. So why do I put a name? Yahweh. No one, and this was told to me by the Ruach HaKadosh, no one has ever pronounced my name correctly because it is so sacred they can die. And this is not about, oh, well, it's Yeshua or Yeshua or Yahweh or Yahweh. No, no, no. It's really, it's using the name Yah. Yah. Our Father who are in heaven, hallow be thy name. His name is sacred. Now, when you call him, when you talk to him, when you speak to people, when you are calling whatever it is that you're calling, you are singing. You're making a sound. You're making a frequency. Get ready for this. Ready? Here. Names mean something. Can you all see this? Yeah. If this is the this is called the, the what is it? Music. The musical notes. The sofacial, I think they call it. Now, watch this. Watch this. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. And then it starts again. Why is that? Because what comes out of our mouth are just words and sounds. And how you sound in your mouth, that is what you are going to receive. Because death and life are in the power of your tongue. And if you take this, this is the menorah. If you take this right here, it's the Father. Okay. It's the Father. <laughs> no matter how busy the Most High is, He will always send hell for you. Are you confused? No, no. I'm Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking about names. Uh, should our names be come from the Bible? Some people have all these I'm coming to far that. out names that I don't know where they come from. I'm coming to that. Okay. She's saying that there's people that have these far out names because they take two names and they put them together and, you know. What do you call your blessing? Why are some of you still in poverty? Why, why are some of you are, are in denial? Why are some of you have not excelled in what you need to excel? What is stopping you? Where are you going? How is your relationship with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with co-workers? How is your relationship? How well do you take care of your body? It sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Because he is a lot. Mm -hmm. And with him, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. What are you calling in your life? See, you need to, look at this, call. You need to call the things that are not as though they were. There's power in the name of Yahweh. There's power. Instead of you constantly talking about your problem, when you see it, why don't you call upon 
him. Why don't you worship him? And watch what happens. Listen very carefully. When, you, when we speak, we make a sound. Sound, what happens with sound? Sound is, is music. Okay? Also, it's frequency. Because it all depends on how, how you put, how the tongue, when you're going to say a word, is it behind here, here? I mean, how it is, and how, how, what you're saying, you're calling what you're calling, the name, name, whatever you're naming is what's going to be in your life. Do you know what kind of power Yahweh has? Do you know what kind of power Yeshua has? Listen very carefully. If you really look at this, now watch this. If you really look at this, you got a hand here, 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 and a hand here. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Looks like two hands, right? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Because these two, these two sides are worshiping Yahweh with their hands. You have, you have, you have Earth worshiping Him, Father, and then you have Heaven angels. Constantly are worshiping him 24-7. When, when you begin to recognize who Yahweh is, you begin to give him, you begin to recognize, you begin to call his name, and he's going to feel so good. You begin to worship him, no matter what's happening to you. He will send angels for your aid. He will help you. Because now, look at this. When he is more happy, his glory, more. his glory, his Shekinah shines and gets bigger and bigger. And he will lift you up and he will give you the desires of your heart. Look at some of you that says it doesn't matter what name you use. Names are the most sweetest and most important sound in any language. Names mean something. Do you remember the serpent in the garden? Yes. He never used. He never told Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve. He just, he just went to the woman. And they sinned. The devil, when he tempted Yeshua, the devil never called Yeshua by his name. He just said, if you are the Son of God. He never called Yeshua by his name. Why? Because there's power in the name. Oh, he, 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 there's power in the name. He was too afraid to use the name? No, no, no. It's, he wasn't afraid. There's power in the name. And when the name comes up, and when the name comes up, guess what happens? When the name comes up, darkness has to go. When Yeshua was being tempted by the devil, the devil never mentioned his name. So when we pray in his true name, the darkness has to go. Yes. When you're in, when you're, look, listen very carefully. When you're in the tunnel, when you're in the, when you're in a, in a, in a mess, just say the name Yeshua or Yahweh. That's it. Yeshua or Yahweh. See, when Yeshua was being tempted, Never doing in his temptation to Yeshua. He never called the name of Yeshua. Because he knows that it says, it is biblically, it says, every tongue, I'm sorry, every knee will bow down, including Satan. And every tongue will confess that Yeshua HaMashiach is the son, is the son of Yahweh. Amen. And he knows, because if he says that, he's got to bow down. Yeah. See, Angels don't, don't work the way we work as human beings. Angels know how to respect each other. Even, even Satan, that he's, he's a fallen angel. They know, they know that what kind of position he used to have. 
because in the book of uh, in the book of uh, let me see who where is it in the book of um, of Jude. When, 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 when Satan came and was fighting for the, for the, for the, um, for the body of Moses, the angel says, may Yahweh rebuke you. Amen. Satan, may Yahweh rebuke you. And let me tell you, angels are very powerful. Amen. They're more powerful than you and I. Jude 1.9. Jude, uh, uh, just verse, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil and disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring any, any him railing accusation, but said, May Yahweh rebuke you. Wow. Satan never used, yet never used the name. And Satan never uses the name Yahweh. Because he knows how sacred that is. Wow. And when, if he knows, if he said that name, let me tell you, he already, He's going to be demolished in one second. And then we take the name for granted. Because yeah. we, think we, we, think, we think we're so holy patrol and we think we're, we're so mighty and we think we're the children of the Most High and we take it for granted. Wow. Can you remember that Yeshua was, when he was being tempted, the, the, the devil used uh, either Jesus or, or Yeshua, did he said that? No. If you are the son of the living Elohim, because Yahweh calls all his angels sons. Amen. He does not call his angels by anything name, but his sons. There was a day when the sons of Elohim came to meet with him in, in the book of Job. Yeah. If you are the son of Elohim, because Satan also was, is the son of Elohim. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you are the son of Elohim, make this rock turn into bread. If you are the son of Elohim, I will take you to the highest pinnacle and I will give you all the governments of the world because the key has been given unto me. All the authority has been given unto me. But he never mentioned his name. Because there's name. There's power in the name of Yeshua. There's power in the name of Yahweh. There's power. There is power. And when the enemy hears it, they shake, they bake, including it is so holy that most brother Jews, they don't, they don't pronounce it because it's very sacred. Listen very carefully. What you're calling is calling you. What you want, it wants you. What you're desiring is desiring you. And why doesn't it manifest? You should ask yourself that question. Why doesn't it manifest? Can you repeat that? What we're calling, what we're desiring? What you're calling is calling you. What you want, wants you. What you're after is after you. And I'm speaking about your blessings. It's very simple. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? We all, I want you all to go to this one. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Proverbs. And if you notice, no matter what the enemy tempts in the Bible, including in your life, he will never mention Yeshua's name or Yahweh. Never. But the moment he begins to tempt you and put obstacles in your way and you begin to say the name of Yahweh, immediate second, I mean, it's like he leaves. Because let me tell you what happened. Yahweh comes. He takes off scared. He gets scared. His presence comes. This is why you need to be very careful what comes out of your mouth. 
You need to be very careful what you say that comes out of your mouth because what you say, even if it's good or bad, you will get what you're saying. You will bring what you say. And you will stop what you say. It's all in your mouth. Because everything has a name. And what is the name that you've been using to come out of where you're at? See, the problem with a lot of believers is that their focus is more on people than they are on Yahweh. Wow. Say that again. The problem with most believers is that they're more focused on, on people than on Yahweh. Because you feel like you're lonely and, and you're not going to get anywhere. And you need, you need, you need a body love to be next to you. Body love. Body love. You need body love to be next to you so, 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 so that person can, can help you get there. And yes, we need people in our lives so they can encourage us, so they can help us. But you need people, the right people that have the same ideas to help you in your dream. And Reggie. You need Reggie. And Reggie. <laughs> That person that is no longer there, why do you keep on seeking them? They're not supposed to be there because you yourself don't want it there. You ask him to leave to, so they can leave your life. So why don't you claim it for them to be in your life again? Hmm. What is his name? Proverbs 18.10. Did I say that right? Yeah. Proverbs 18.10. The name of Yahweh. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm in the wrong place. It's my fault. Hello. The name of Hello. Yahweh is is it me you're looking for? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. Wait. It's, okay. Here. Here we go. Okay. Look what his name is. The name of Yohaveh is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Sometimes you need to run away from your family. You need to run away from co-workers. You need to run away sometimes from your husband, your, your wife, your children. And be one with him. The name of Yahweh is a fortress. You know what a fortress is? The name of Yahweh are the, the walls of Jericho. They're not going to come down. The name of Yahweh is your strength, is your power, is your hiding place. Is your anointing, is your blessing, is your money, is your healing. It's your prosperity. It's your wisdom. It's your understanding. It's how to be a mother, how to be a father, how to be a better believer. The name of Yahweh is a strong fortress. For, it's a, it's a um, strong tower. It's our protection. Mm -hmm. Who is the righteous that run to it? Who are the righteous? The one to do his commandments, his sons. <laughs> the ones that are protected. Righteous, not according to what I have been taught. That righteous is you do good, you go to church, you do this, you, you read the Bible. You need to do all this. Righteousness is when you do his commandments. Psalms 119, 172. See, today I'm teaching you. Oh, yeah. 119, 172. And it says, The tongue shall speak of thy word, for all your commandments are righteousness. And when you are in righteousness and you decide to leave, the Bible says it is better for you not to know him than to know him and leave, because the state that you're going to be is going to be worse than when you started.
The strong tower is a metaphor of the amazing protection of Yahweh. He is a shelter, a stronghold from the enemy. When we have no strength of our own, when we need a hiding place, a place of protection, security, when we need a refuge from storms around us, we can run into a strong tower, into our strong tower, Yahweh, because his name is called the strong tower. And how do I know this? 2 Samuel 22, 2 and 3. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel uh, chapter 22. Please go with me. Now this is this is Samuel. This is this is Samuel speaking. 2 Samuel 22. 2 and 3. I'm sorry, it was David. It was David. David spoke. Because David was being persecuted by Saul. Uh -huh. Let me start on verse number one. And David spoke unto Yahweh the words of this song. Now he was singing to him. See, this is what we need to worship him. Second Samuel. Uh -huh. After Deuteronomy. Yeah. 22, one. And David spoke unto Yahweh in words of this song in the, in the day mm -hmm. that Yahweh had delivered him out of the hand of all the enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, Yahweh is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my Elohim of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and, and, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. You, are, you save of me out of violence. I will call upon Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised, so shall be, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Your enemies are the ones that want you dead. Yeah. 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 Your enemies are the ones who don't give a don't give a hoot about you. Your enemies are sometimes your own family members and friends. They don't want nothing good for you. Because Yeshua says, your enemy will be out of your own family. Yep. They, they pretend they do. They what? They pretend they do. They pretend they do. Thank you, brother. They pretend they do, but they're not. Because see, we look at them because what they look outside, but Yahweh looks in their heart that is evil. Yeah. So your enemy really comes from people that are around you. King Saul hated David. King Saul wanted him dead because he was a pebble in his shoe. King Saul killed other people because they helped David. King Saul was possessed by Satan. Because Yahweh took his spirit away from him. An evil spirit. And Yahweh sent a, a tormenting spirit to torment him. And his own son Jonathan was David's best friend. And his own That's son, like Jonathan, family. was his best friend. Yes. Your own family comes to him. Yeah. Yes. Or your own... yeah. Hallelujah. The powerful name Yahweh, the sacred name, is dynamic. It is the essence of the Creator Himself. Those who know the name of Yahweh and use it, Know that they can trust him and fulfill his promises. When you know his name, when you use his name, those that use his name, hallelujah, will trust in him. And know that he will not forsake us. Psalms 9, 10. I'm giving you this so you can do your own study in your own leisure time. Psalm chapter 9, verse number 10. See, this is what happens when I when there's a difference between teaching and preaching the word. I'm teaching today. Say it again. Which one? When those who use the name of Yahweh will trust in him, Psalms chapter 9, verse 10. Okay. Amen. Sing, I'm sorry. Um, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Yahweh, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Are you seeking him? Yes. Are you seeking that name? Yes. So you trust him? Yes. 
yes. then he will bless you. Do you believe this? Amen. Sometimes people call, uh, use rabbi as the name. And they They're trapped. The teacher. The teacher is a rabbi, but I've, I've heard people call him rabbi. Is that a right or that's just a title? Do you mean the, the name rabbi? You mean in yeah. the Bible? Yeah. And they, okay. It's Yeshua so said, do not call anybody father, and they do this in Catholics. And Yeshua said, because there's only one father in heaven. Yeshua said, do not call any, anybody rabbi, because there's only one, one, one teacher, which it means teacher. So, the some call rabbis, well, they want to be called rabbis because they feel good, and you know, you have to respect. And some fathers, I, I, I will not call anybody besides my father, my earthly father and father in heaven, except for, for my father. I will not call anybody else father. Did I answer that question? No. <laughs> okay, then I'll, I'll okay. <laughs> then leave it for later. Leave it for later. Listen very carefully. The Creator's name is the key to understanding biblical faith. Discover the power and glory of the ruler of the universe by discovering his personal revealed name and the original and true name of your glorious Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah, because Jews had superiority de determined that the sacred name was too holy to pronounce, they and Christianity after them have substituted whatever names they wanted. They forgot and ignore Yahweh's holy name. There's and only, Yahweh was not was not happy with that. There's only one rabbi. Only one. Yeshua. 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 And he yes. said, don't call anybody rabbi. But they do call others. Because know. they do it because they do it, but either we obey him or we obey men. Because if, if if he says don't call anybody father because there's only one father in heaven and don't call anybody rabbi, why should I call myself rabbi? I just say Jew. Right. Where, do they, where does the, the word Jew come from when there's no J in the Hebrew alphabet? Sure. So who's putting that Jew thing and who's putting that rabbi? Mankind. Yes. Because we like to change things around. It's man. Jews have taken, our brother Judah has taken the name because they say it's very holy to pronounce. And Christianity after that has substituted the name of Yahweh for Adonai, Hashem, Lord, and, some, and Señor. Jeremiah 23, verse 26 and 27, it says this. Now this is Yahweh speaking to Jeremiah, the prophet, what he should tell the people. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse numbers 26 and 27. How long shall this be in thy heart of thy prophets that prophesy lies? Yeah, they, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Which think of cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their father had forgotten my name for Baal. They have forgotten the name Yahweh for the Lord. Anywhere in the Bible, you see in big capitals, Lord, were really the four letters. You'll have a he. So Yahweh saying here, my people have forgotten my name. My name. And he doesn't like that because now we're taking his name in vain and we're putting somebody else's name, which Lord means is a title. It's not a name. It's a title. Yes? Should we say Yohaveh or Yahweh? Either or. Because nobody pronounced it. I say Yahweh. Some say Yahweh. Some say Yahweh. You know what? Nobody. According to what the Ruach HaKadosh, nobody has pronounced his name correctly. Okay. And really what it is, is just four letters. yod he vah -He. I am that I am. Yahweh, the very name that offered protection, blessings, and salvation, was deleted from the common usage, and the various names of Baal, which is the Lord, were substituted in to listen to, to, the, to the stinging rebuke of Yeshua, the Messiah. Her. In other words, in the time of Yeshua, they told him, do not speak in that name. They told Yeshua, don't speak in that name. Luke 11, 52. They told, they told Yeshua. 
Yeshua said, woe unto you lawyers. <laughs> because you're not using that name. Listen very carefully. Look at what Yeshua said. This is Yeshua speaking. 11.52. Woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You enter now yourself into heaven, and them that were entering, you hinder. Saying, don't speak in that name. It is a warning to anyone who thinks the name of Yahweh is not important enough to use and worship in. To reject the name of Yahweh is to reject eternal life. This is why it is become necessary for Yahweh to reveal himself again to man and reveal his name. Yeshua said it in prayer. I have revealed your name to them. Wow. Your name. Your name. Hiding his name is unlawful. Hiding name is unlawful. There's many references to use Yahweh's name. It is important enough to Yahweh to include it in the law. In the law. What was the law? What was, the, what was the commandment that I read to you? <coughs> do not take the name of Yahweh, your Elohim. Do not say it in vain. In vain means when you talk, when you put somebody else's name. When you put the Lord's name, when you put Baal's name, when you put Hashem means the name. Shem means name and Ha means the, the name. Look at how we've been, for years we thought it was just, don't use the cuss word. Yes, don't use the cuss word, right? Yeah. Yes. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh your Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. The word vain actually means to make desolate. Yahweh's name is Kadosh, is holy, and is to be treated as such. Let them praise the great name and terrible name, awesome name of his holy name. Through the use of Yahweh's holy name, Israel was victorious in wars. When it, Israel was victorious when they used Yahweh's name. Psalms chapter 20 verse 7. Let's go there. Israel <laughs> was victorious when they used Yahweh's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of Yahweh our Elohim. What verse is that? Psalms chapter 20, verse number uh, 7. Get ready for this on the same chapter. Verse number one. Yahweh hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of Elohim of Jacob defends thee. Send thee help from its sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Kings found safety with that name. Yahweh put his name on Israel according to the priest laws and stated in numbers. You want to hear it? Let's go there. I'm almost done. Number 622. This is the ironic prayer. Numbers chapter um, 6 verse 22. This is when Yahweh told Moses to tell the priest, Aaron, to really make the, the, the this is the, the sheen. This is one of the letters, the sheen. Oops, sorry, <laughs> sorry. My husband does that. I don't do that. He does the one that does that. Look at what he says. Look at what he says on, uh, on Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto the sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahweh bless thee and keep, ye, keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. Yeah. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. What verse is that? 
Chapter 6, number 6, 22 to 27. Yeah. Why is it important? Look at this. Why is it important that we be required to call upon the name of Yahweh? Why is that? The reason, you want to see the reason why it's important? Psalms chapter 91, verse 14. I'm giving you a lot of a lot of scriptures today. Chapter 91, verse 14. Say when you're there, say Amen. Chapter 91, verse 14. Because this is why. This is why Yahweh wants us to, to say his name. It's important. He required of it. Because he has set his life upon me. This is Yahweh speaking. Therefore, I will deliver him and I will set him a high because he has known what? Where are you, where are you at? Verse 14, 91 14. Because he has known my name. Because you have put his love upon Yahweh and you have known his name. He shall be, he, sh he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him what? My salvation is talking to him. I will show him my Yeshua. My Yeshua. There are many promises in the Bible. Oh. How can we claim the promises under a different name? Because the divine name discloses the almighty nature. It is laden with the authority, power, holiness of Yahweh himself. This accounts for great reverence for his name, which is one of the distinctive features of Elohim's faith. The name of Yahweh is his essence. Pronouncing Yahweh's name is more than a mere disturbance of the air molecules. It is the expression of his, of his being. Because the word of Yahweh came to the prophet with all authority of Yahweh himself. With this authority, the apostles worked among the people. On the day of Pentecost, the apostle Peter boldly quoted Joel 2.32 And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. How can you call the name of Baal and be saved? How can you call the name of, Baal, of, of, of the Lord? Lord and Baal is the same thing. Lord and Yahweh are not the same thing. And this you can find in Acts 2.21 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. The apostles were persecuted because of the name Yahweh and Yeshua. And they said to them, you can find this, you don't have to go there, Acts 5.27. And the high priest asked them, say, did, not, did we not ask you strictly not to speak? That you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Remember Yeshua did not come in his own name, but he, the great name of the Father, the forbidden name. And with this I leave. Remember Yeshua did not come in his own name, but in the great name of his Father. Yahweh Sabaoth, the forbidden name. Our Father, which thou art in heaven, hallelujah, your name. Hallelujah, hallowed be your Yah name forever. Shalom Aleichem. Thank you.